some Yankee town up in Missouri, and I'm also I'm up joined up here with Daniel. He's all the way from New York. Now guys, Gator Country was founded back in 2006 as a nuisance alligator rescue, and then we started getting interns all the way from across the country just like us. We even got a few from, you know, Germany and places like that. So guys, well, the, like I said, the one thing that we like to focus on here is the nuisance alligators. Now, what a nuisance alligator is, is an alligator that gets where we want to be, like, you know, where we fish, boat, hang out on our tubes, stuff like that, or an alligator that's lost its fear of humans. Now, how an alligator loses its fear of humans is whenever it be, um, is being fed. If there is one thing we want y'all to leave here with, it is not to feed alligators, because we, we would rather alligators, you know, hang out in the wild, live their best lives out there, um, because, you know, that's where they're meant to be, correct? Now guys, um, we're going to teach y'all a little bit about alligators, about how they work. And the first thing I want to start on talking about is how they are ambush predators. Alligators are ambush predators. Um, what they'll do is they'll sit on the side, um, on the edges of lakes, ponds, stuff like that, wait for something to come down, take a drink, and they'll use mechanical the receptors on the side of their jaw to sense where that animal is and about how big it is and if it can be a meal or not. And then they'll come up, they'll come up, splash out of the water, bite, bite down, pull them back in and drown them. Oh, he Guys, now alligators can actually hold their breath for up to two hours. So two if you're ever hanging hours. around um, your, you know, your rivers, ponds, lakes, or whatever, and you see an alligator, don't just, and he goes under, don't just expect that, you know, he ran away, he's not there no more, so I can dive right on in. Guys, like I said, alligators can hold their breath for up to two hours. Never just assume that. And another thing that I want to talk about is alligators have very few natural predators once they reach four foot. There's something that we like to call the two foot rule in the alligator world. If I'm two feet or bigger than you, I can eat you all day long. So, and then, like I said guys, once I reach four foot, they have very few natural predators. One would be other alligators and the other is humans. You know, everybody's eating swamp people, right? Yep. So guys, uh, alligators actually have three sets of eyelids. They have a normal one that works like ours, and then they have one called the osteoderm eyelid, and they have another one that is called the dictating membrane. That is a little clear eyelid that goes across their eye whenever they're under um, under the water, swimming around in this nasty water, and it acts as a form of goggles. So, what um, they don't have to, you know, go up to their mom every um, summer and say, "Hey, get me a new pair of goggles from Walmart, please, mom." No, they don't got to do that. I wish I didn't have to. My mom gets pretty mad at me every summer. So, guys, 
Another thing I want to talk about is y'all see those bon um, bony platelets on the side of their on their backs? Those are actually called osteoderms. Those work as a few things. Those one work as a solar panel. Two, um, they also work as a form of protection. Guys, like I said, they work as a solar panel because alligators are actually cold blooded. So if they don't get up, you know, bask and take in all the nice sun rays, then they're not going to be able to eat. They're not going to be able to digest their food, and it's going to make them very sick. Got it. So, and um, like I said, they're cold blooded, and and then I said that it walks on. Um, it works as a form of protection. So whenever they get into fights or some or something like that, um, they'll um, they'll whenever you get in fights or something like that. And an al another alligator will chop down on their back. It will hopefully protect them um, from that bigger alligator. Wait, what? Now, guys, this time of year, alligators are actually act acting a little weird because this is the time of year that is their breeding season. So you might have heard it on uh, walking around the park and stuff. But alligators, you know, they can't drive around a big fancy truck, get in a nice dress or something like that. They have to um, do something called a bellow. What they're going to do is raise their head and tail about the water, drop their abdomen down into the water, and create and let out a slight growl or make good make it sound like a growl. Maybe your dad's snoring off in the distance. My dad snores a lot, so I don't know what that sounds like. And God, um, what that is is not the um, noise that makes the, uh, the alligators attractive, the female alligators attractive. It is actually the vibration on um, that will the let off on their back. They'll let off a little water shimming. The water will you know shoot up everywhere, and that vibration is what really makes sense. Because, like I said, they have the mechanoreceptors on the side of their jaw. There's little black dots. Y'all maybe will be able to see them on the alligators that we have inside or at the weight pool that y'all can hold. Now, that, um, like I said, that detects, that detects the vibration in the water. And the females will be like, oh, the um, harder the vibration, you know, in theory, the bigger the alligator, correct? The stronger the babies will be in the future. And then they'll eventually find, you know, the biggest male alligator, and then they'll go off, you know, do some private scuba diving lessons or whatever they do in the middle of the pond. And then they'll, you know, around September, they'll come up and the females will start scratching together and start on. Um, they'll start scratching together some mud, dirt, leaves, stuff like that, and they'll create a nest. And what she'll do is she'll sit there and she'll lay about 35 eggs. The reason they lay so many is because alligators, um, only about 2% of those will reach maturity, which is six foot in length. That's pretty crazy, huh, guys? Imagine having 35 babies to look after. But guys, um, they, like I said, only 2% of them reach maturity because alligators, whenever they're real little, they have way more predators um, than whenever they um, pass four foot. You know, big egrets, um, fish, uh, raccoons. But their number one main predator is other alligators because the big males will be swimming around and they'll see another little baby alligator and say, hey, that's not mine. And they'll, um, because they'll only want their genes out there. And they'll go over there, snap down, eat that baby alligator. But if they're lucky, the mom will be around. Guys, I don't care how good of a mom y'all think y'all are, nobody's ever beaten the mama alligator in that one. Guys, they'll fight off anything from as little as a um, small snake trying to come over there, or they even been documented trying to fight off helicopters. It's pretty cool, guys. Now, um, well, now, like I said, uh, they get them together and they um, make a nest. And now every year we have to go into our breeder pond or our other ponds and go raid these nests so that um, the little babies don't hatch out and get eaten by other bigger alligators. And what we'll do is we'll take our wooden shield and our PVC poles and stuff like that, and we'll go out there and hopefully be able to protect ourselves. Now, last year, guys, we got pretty unlucky. Our big old mama alligator, Allie, over here in our breeder pod, she actually decided to hit the wooden shield a few too many times, and she broke it. And then whenever she broke that, we had to book it on out of there so we could uh, make sure we were safe. Now, guys, I got a question for y'all. What do you think is the best way to run away from an alligator? A, zigzag. B, a straight line, or C, climb a tree. Raise your hand if you think it's A. It's A, guys. It's definitely A. Shut up, Grace. Don't tell them the answer. I see a few hands. Raise your hand if you think it's B, running a straight line. Raise your hand if you think it's C, climb a tree. Now, I see a lot of people that aren't voting. What are y'all doing? Stop, drop, and roll? I'm pretty sure that's fire. It's not alligators, guys. No, guys, so, um, uh, Gary, our owner, actually decided um, to do a Mythbuster show, be their dummy to um, test out zigzagging. So what he did is he got real close to a mama alligator's nest and started running away zigzagging. And the second um, he did, she zagged, caught him right on his left boot. Don't do that one, guys. 
Now, like I said, alligators can hold on breath for up to two hours under the water. So whenever they come out and on your next to that mama alligator's nest, and you say, oh, I'm just hop up a tree. Nope, don't do that one either, because alligators can actually hold their breath for up to two hours, or they can go up to two years without eating. So, you know, um, I have to eat about every 45 minutes or else I get hangry. But you know, um, if you're up there, you can go two days without water, a week without eating, something like that. But nope, that alligator can hold on can not eat for up to two years. So don't play the waiting game with an alligator, guys. The actually, number one best way to run away from an alligator and to get away from him is chasing me, Daniel, and Grace. I'm going to trip Daniel and Grace and keep on running. He what? Was that not funny? No, I'll see a few laughs. Ha, I'm good. <laughs> but guys, no, with all, all actuality, the real, um, the best way to run away from an alligator is to run in a straight line and get on out of there. That's because alligator's eyes actually sit on the side of the, on their head. Like I said, um, Gary was the dummy from Mythbusters, you know, zigzagging. All you're doing whenever you zigzag is going in and out of the best part of their vision. Whenever you're uh, running a straight line and they're chasing you going forward, they're actually looking for the cross eye. So that doesn't work. Now, guys, I got another question for y'all. Now that y'all know a little bit more about alligators, what do y'all, uh, how many deaths in the state of Texas do y'all think we have every year? Run, 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 run around. Come on, guys. Shoot out some numbers for me. 68. Shut up, Grace. Come on, I don't hear any numbers. Y'all got to help me out with this. 13. Four. 13. 4. 30. Who said 6,000? I heard that one over here somewhere. 32. Guys, actually, in the past 100 years, there's only been one fatal alligator attack in the state of Texas. And that was because there was this guy, he was out on a on bar at the bayou getting some drinks with the boys, and he tipped a few too many back, and they told him, they said, hey, watch out, there's an alligator there that's been being fed. So, you know, he doesn't have his fear of humans. Remember, don't feed alligators, guys. And he dives on in, you know, he thought he was a big bad one in the swamp. He said, I can take that nine-foot alligator, he ain't gonna get me. He couldn't take that nine-foot alligator, guys. The second he dove on him, that alligator snatched smack, down on him, grabbed him, took him and drowned him. But he did not eat him. Guys, we, um, if alligators eat humans, they'll actually get very, very sick. That's because we, our body is too salty, or our meat is too salty for them to actually digest and be okay. So, and then that was his last bridge. Yeah. All right, guys, that, that's about all I got for you here. If you guys want to come right over here to Big Tex, we'll do a show with them. Did the redneck from Louisiana do good? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, Grace. Yeah. <laughs> what? Yeah. Alright, I guess it's over.